shielded metal arc welding is easily the most widely used process in the world today. From the appearance of the electrode, it's easy to see why shielded metal arc welding is referred to as stick welding. To begin the welding process, the electrode is placed in the holder and the work clamp is attached to the metal to be welded. The electrical circuit is completed by the arc which is created when the tip of the electrode touches the work. The intense heat of the arc almost instantaneously melts the tip of the electrode as well as the surface of the work beneath the arc. Small drops of molten metal are pinched off the tip of the electrode, then transferred through the arc stream into the molten weld puddle. In this manner, filler metal is deposited as the electrode is progressively consumed. This process is generally applied manually, so the welder moves the arc over the work at the appropriate arc length and travel speed. The flux coating on the outside of the electrode protects the weld area in two ways. First, the flux provides a cleansing action through the use of deoxidizers and scavenging agents. These are contained in the gases formed by the melting flux. The gases also provide for a shielding action against contamination by the atmosphere. And because the flux is lighter than the metal, it floats to the surface of the molten puddle and forms a hardened slag covering as it cools. The formation of this slag provides further protection against atmospheric contamination. After the weld is made and cooled sufficiently, the hardened slag is chipped away and the weldment cleaned with the use of a chipping hammer and wire brush. Shielded metal arc welding is one of the most widely used of the arc welding methods and is particularly suited for short welds in construction, maintenance, repair, and field construction. The equipment is relatively simple, inexpensive, and portable. The positions that SMAW can be used in are not limited by the process, but by the type and size of the electrodes. Because the electrodes are produced in straight lengths, they can be consumed to only about two inch stubs. When that length is reached, the welder must break the arc and replace the electrode. This causes arc time and deposition rate to be lower with covered electrodes than with a continuous electrode process. And the slag must be removed from the bead and the completed weld cleaned before depositing a second pass. Flex cord arc welding possesses some of the characteristics of shielded metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding, and submerged arc welding. Flex cord welding features two major process variations that differ in the way in which the arc and weld pool are shielded from atmospheric contamination. The major variation in this process is that the shielding flux is contained inside the wire electrode. Shielding is accomplished through the vaporization of the flux in the heat of the arc. This type of flux cord welding greatly resembles the stick method, but along with that the convenience of continuous wire and without the need for cylinders of shielding gas, making it ideal for use in the field. The second type of flux cord welding utilizes a shielding gas in addition to the flux contained in the wire. The flux contained in the electrode wire provides a number of cleansing and scavenging agents along with its shielding characteristics making shielded flux cord welding ideal for contaminated metals. The additional shielding gas used in this process is meant to increase atmospheric shielding. Both methods of flux cord welding, like stick electrode welding, produce a thin slag covering the weld. This slag usually must be removed from the weld with chipping hammer and wire brush. But flux cord arc welding has many obvious advantages over the SMAW process lower cost and less effort on the part of the welder, for example. Submerged arc welding is a process in use in almost all industries where high deposition rates, deep penetration, and adaptability to automatic equipment to produce large weldments is needed. In SAW, or subarc as it is commonly referred to, there is no visible evidence of the arc between the electrode and the workpiece. The end of the electrode and the welding zone are always surrounded and shielded by an envelope of molten flux, which is beneath a layer of granular unfused flux. 
In subarc, the electrode is not in contact with the workpiece. The current is carried across the arc through the fluid flux. Since the end of the electrode and the welding zone are completely covered at all times by the granular flux used in the process, sparks, spatter, smoke and flash commonly observed in other arc welding processes are not present, or at least not visible. No protective shields or helmets are necessary, although safety glasses should be worn as routine protection for the eyes against adjacent welding operations or the possibility of an arc flashing through the granular flux. Although limited to use in the flat position, submerged arc welding can be applied to a large range of industrial applications. High deposition, deep penetration and quality welds make the process ideal for welding of heavy structural members where long welds are required. Now, what is pulsed MIG welding? Well, before I can give you a really good definition, we should talk about three other related types of metal transfer. The first is short circuiting, sometimes called short arc, or by its initials, SCMT, or by the official title of GMAW, or gas metal arc welding. This animation shows graphically how the wire leaves the contact tube in the gun, contacts the workpiece, and short circuits the wire electrode to the base material, causing the wire to heat and melt. Heat is also transferred to the workpiece, which melts at the point of contact, creating a pool of molten material. The molten wire is added to the pool, and the bead and joint are formed as the pool cools. These short circuits occur at a rate of 20 to 250 per second, depending on wire feed speed. With short circuit transfer, wire feed speeds, voltages, and deposition rates are usually lower than other transfer methods. Small diameter electrode wire is used, and the weld pool cools between each short circuit, allowing the process to be used for out of position welding. Production of some spatter and a potential lack of fusion on thicker materials are two limiting factors with short circuit transfer. During the globular transfer of metal while MIG welding, large globs of weld metal carried by gravity transfer from the wire across the arc to the weld pool. These globs, or droplets, are usually much larger than the wire diameter. Globular is a more unstable transfer with a rough weld bead appearance. The welding parameters, amperage, voltage, and wire feed speed are higher than for short circuiting. Globular transfer occurs at amperage levels between short circuiting and spray transfer. Cold lapping or incomplete fusion may result from large droplets that splash metal from the weld pool. And there's generally a good deal of spatter. All things considered, there aren't many good things to say about globular transfer. But it can be used when bead appearance is not a critical factor. A spray arc transfer sprays a stream of tiny molten droplets across the arc to the base material. The droplets are usually much smaller than the diameter of the electrode wire. Once the spray arc has been established, it is said to be on all the time. Spray transfer is achieved using relatively high voltage, wire feed speed, and amperage. When parameters are correct, the spray arc produces a humming or buzzing sound. High metal deposition rates are achieved as a result of the high current density. A high degree of heat in the spray arc results in a large fluid weld pool, limiting its use to the flat and horizontal positions, and then only on materials of an eighth inch or thicker. Spray arc offers high deposition rates, use of larger diameter wires, good bead appearance, great fusion and penetration, and very little spatter. We've spent this time reviewing these three methods of metal transfer with the confidence that the review will help you better understand the fourth method, pulsed spray transfer. Pulsed spray includes desirable characteristics of the other three. You'll perhaps hear a number of different names for this transfer method. They may include pulsed MIG, pulsed GMAW, or GMAWP, the official AWS term. But keep in mind, they all mean the same thing. 
Metal is transferred by the same method as spray transfer, except with pulsed spray transfer, the welding power source through its electrical circuitry rapidly changes the current output between a settable peak or high current level and a settable background or low current level. The current level never falls to zero as it may during the short circuiting or globular transfers. Instead, the background current remains at a level that will sustain an arc, but will not transfer metal. By doing this, we get the high deposition of the spray process and the cooling of the weld pool and out of position capabilities like those found in short circuiting. Pulsed spray combines many of the advantages of short circuiting and spray transfer. Among them, the ability to use spray transfer on thinner material. An experienced welder will have success welding out of position and on materials as thin as 18 gauge. And there is little or no spatter. In fact, some users have chosen pulsed spray because of the appearance of the weld bead alone. It lends itself to high visibility welds or those welds that are going to be chrome plated. There are many economies realized when using pulsed spray. Both thick and thin materials may be joined using the same lighter gauge wire. Thicker wire is less expensive per pound and is easier to feed through guns and drive rolls. This same advantage means guns, liners, contact tips, and wire feed drive rolls do not have to be changed each time workpiece thickness changes. There are many more advantages to pulsed spray welding but they are related to the type of equipment chosen to produce the weld. We'll cover them in more detail during the next programs. And there are some disadvantages. The equipment required to do pulsed spray may be more expensive than equipment for standard gas metal arc transfer methods. And the shielding gas must contain at least 90% argon. Unless adaptable and or pre-programmed equipment is used, setup for welding may be more difficult. First, to set your mind at ease, if you are an accomplished MIG welder, you will have to learn nothing new to weld using pulsed spray. Travel speed, gun angle, and hand manipulation for pulsed MIG are very similar to regular pulsed spray transfer. A push gun technique is almost always employed when using pulsed spray. If you drag the gun, the bead will be high and ropey. That's because pulsed spray, and for that matter, regular spray transfer, create a great deal of force in the weld pool. If we were dragging the gun, these forces would tend to blow the pool back, raising the bead onto itself. High deposition rates are characteristic of pulsed MIG. The beginning operator may have a tendency to travel too slow. Keep the electrode at the leading edge of the pool while observing the bead. Excessive buildup is a sure sign that travel speed is too slow. We've set up six welding demos to provide a comparison between short circuiting, non-pulsed spray transfer, and pulsed spray transfer. We'll weld square groove joints vertical up on quarter inch steel. Then we'll make some horizontal lap joints on 16 gauge and eighth inch aluminum. First. Here's a vertical up square groove joint on quarter inch mild steel using short circuiting transfer. The shielding gas is 75% argon, 25% CO2. To make this weld, we've increased voltage and wire feed speed over the values we would normally use for the same weld in the horizontal or flat position on metal of this thickness. The result? a tremendous amount of spatter. Not too good looking, right? Now let's try the same joint using spray transfer. Our gas mixture is 95% argon, 5% oxygen to support the spray process, and our voltage and wire feed speed, of course, have been increased as well. With the pool sagging down out of the weld, it's easy to see that using spray transfer on this joint is virtually impossible. Now, using the same shielding gas as the spray transfer, but switching from spray to pulsed spray transfer, we'll make the same weld. Here's the result. A good looking, nicely formed weld using pulsed spray. Easy to make too. Pulsed spray is certainly the choice for this application. 
The interval of background current between peak current pulses allows the pool to cool and solidify enough to join the material without running out of the joint. Normally, you would use TIG to do a lap or T-joint on 16 gauge or 8 inch aluminum. Or you might have some success by turning wire feed and voltage way down and attempting the joint with the short circuiting process as we're doing here. The results are barely satisfactory. So, let's try the same joint using spray transfer. We're using 100% argon shielding gas, but, oops, the current required for spray transfer is so high that we've completely blown through the base metal. Now, we'll attempt this weld using pulsed MIG. As you might expect, this is the same joint using the same shielding gas, but using pulsed spray. Very little, if any, spatter. An exceptionally good-looking, well-formed bead using the pulsed MIG process on thin aluminum. Again, the time spent in the intervals of background current have reduced the heat input to the workpiece compared to spray transfer and have allowed the pool to cool. We should note that the weld wire used in all these exercises is 035. This is the same wire we've used during all the demonstrations in this series of videos. These demonstrations are telling. We have a transfer process with high deposition rates the ability to weld in any position on virtually any weldable material and to do so without changing wire size.